So good morning, everyone. This is the 8.30, April 14th special meeting of the School Building Committee. And the reason um, I made a decision to call this a special meeting, I actually talked with the town clerk about it. Um, pardon? Sorry. So I just, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. So the main the main reason is we want to have just a discussion today. We're not reaching a decision, but we wanted to talk through the criteria and make sure we had an hour to do it. So this is a dedicated hour to that. Margaret will take notes as we go through the potential markup that Phoebe and I thought through. Um, so my first order of the business today, though, is to make sure everyone can see and be heard so I can call the meeting to order. Um, so I will just read in the order of people I see. Mike? Here. Jonathan? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move on to Paul. Sorry, I can, I can hear and be heard, okay. I hope. <laughs> Paul? I'm here. Rupert? Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm working to get Ben in too, but he's not in yet. Okay. Phoebe. Hi, here. Sean. Here. And Alicia. Here. And, you know, uh, uh, at least a couple other people said they could come or uh, this time work. So I'll just recognize them when they come in. So I want to just say a few words, which was already in the memo that that Phoebe and I uh, well, actually, I wrote the memo, but it's what we we discussed doing. We wanted to take another look at the criteria list that had been we looked at in February because we felt that there were some areas that the rows seemed to be very similar. So try to avoid duplication and then try to group them in ways, in some cases, move something around to a different category because it made some sense to us. And then the other thing we did is we thought, if there was something missing that we an aspect and throughout it we were talking about which things might vary as we looked at ad reno or new or one of the two sites so we thought these criteria to be useful for us shouldn't be the same across all four of those choices that we should some can be the same but the, at least some should vary then the other thing we noticed when we went through and then we'll we'll talk about this is some of the original rows, because we had asked for it, really started to get into the operating high HVAC system of the building and the amount of PV. And so we thought it made some sense to create a separate table on that. We're getting good information from the Donesco uh, Thornton Tom Tomasetti team and be able to evaluate that. That doesn't vary as much by site. It varies really by um, ad reno or new and the choice of which HVAC we use. And then the other thing that came up actually out of last Friday, um, Phoebe picked up on it in particular, was that two-story versus three-story matters, but three-story, two-story is really a decision around the new building, the ad reno new addition. So we thought a separate table on that with some of the things we think will vary would make sense. And that's just a brand new addition. And it became too complicated to think of how many columns that would be. So with that said, um, that's the background of the what I call the messy markup. And Margaret, um, if it's okay with everyone, um, the purpose of today is to get as much input as we can, really hearing from as everyone on a don't like it, like it, what, do, what were you thinking here, um, not to come up with a final decision. So the one other thing I should point out, and it's right at the top, when we originally did the rating system and thought of coloring it, we had two options, the 160, we had the 165 student school, which was going to not fit. So we had some that were not acceptable. Everything we have now is acceptable. Um, so we thought getting down to a three point scale would make some sense, but we can talk about that next week. And we just thought we should have a middle one called neutral <laughs> um, because a few of the things look like it's a plus and a minus, but there's no real difference between the sites. Um, so more favorable, less favorable. 
So I'm, I think I'm turning it over to you, Phoebe, right? We're, that's what we agreed you're gonna do the start. So Margaret, if you can scroll down to where we start to see the markup down on the rows. And okay. actually, do you do you want me to close up the columns with the options so that the text is bigger? Is that better for people? Um, I'll just anybody can say if it, do that they need bigger Cause, text because we're not we're not really look we're not going to be looking at these at the options today. We're really just looking at the text, correct? I think so. Okay. Is that so, okay with everyone? I mean, just shout out yeah, if you'd really see Yeah, that. I, th I think just having A, B, and C rows, um, columns available is, is sufficient. Okay. Okay, there we go. The, okay. only, thing, um, the only thing I will say is, uh, just because it's still there, when in terms of uh, usable size of site, that is something that we need to enter information into. Mm -hmm. We realized that we did have some incorrect information in there. So if somebody can fill that in at some point, that yep. would be fantastic. So yep. we know we'll what we're talking about. You. Yep. So we did a correction on the actual side of site. Um, so that's now in on, because yep. once, okay. Okay, Phoebe, you're on. All right. Um, so one of the first things, so I just talked about uh, usable size of site. One of the first things that we did was we took out um, uh, some of the wording, which you'll see later uh, in terms of um, the net zero and energy use and that kind of stuff. And we bumped it up into a fact because it is a fact that we know that uh, we are going to achieve the town's net uh, uh, net zero bylaws. So that was moved up. Um, so you'll see later where, where some of that came out of. But moving on to, um, so we originally had equity in here, uh, just as equity and Kathy and I were uh, both a little bit um, like, what are the, what are we really trying to get to with that? I don't think we ever really, um, uh, defined it. So we were working with some, uh, sort of assumptions here. And then we realized that there was a, a piece missing in, in our thought, um, about how all of it affected the transition impact and those kinds of things. So we ended up with a category, um, equity, um, and we, equity, and transition impact. So this has to do with some of the things that were brought up last week. Um, so we actually removed SPED pathways and impact because we go into it in a little bit more detail um, later on. Um, we did add access to public transit, of course. Um, so that came up obviously because we, we just wanna recognize that not everybody in town has a car and it may not be as easily accessible as you know driving to a school. So um, there's also proximity issues between, between the different sites. Um, so that was something that we added in here because it felt like um, it was at least something that we needed to take into account, something that we needed to uh, think about when, when looking really specifically at the different sites. Um, and uh, please feel free to chime in if anybody has any differences of opinion or questions. Um, minimizes construction. So, so, so I, I'm just want to get clarification because I have thoughts on all these things. So I just wondered, do you want to go through everything, Phoebe, and then come back for discussion? Maybe, maybe that's the most efficient way. Um, sure. Well, either. So, Paul, do you want to? I want to make sure we. Um, Everyone who got a chance to look at it, do we want to just, do you want us to walk through the rationale? I'm, I'm going to just look for a group, a group thing, or do you want us to just first see if anyone has any comments anywhere? Um, I'm, I'm open to either way. Sean has his hand up. Sean. Maybe we could just do section by section. So maybe Phoebe could give the, the rationale for like building and site facts, and then we can open that up for questions and discuss those. Okay. And then go to the, and then go to the next one, and that way, we, you know, we get the overview, but we don't get so much that we, you know, can't remember when we talk about the specific um, categories. Okay, so we've just done two. She's Phoebe's basically done these first two. So why don't we just stop and see? Because some of the things we moved from another category. So Paul. Yeah. So if, on, under building and site, so usable size of site acres, um, who. Who gets? It? I mean, the, the size of site is a, 
definitive, that's a, that's a fact, usable size of site, who gets to determine what that is? Who, who will make that decision? Um, I think that was originally there primarily more for Fort River because there's a lot of area that is no disturb or not buildable or usable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Fort River will have probably obviously um, less acreage for a usable where, where Wildwood, you know, we can cut into the hill. I mean, it's only money, right? But, but really primarily the whole site for um, Wildwood would be accessible. So it just looks a little bit like there's a disparity in the size of the sites, but once you start looking at the usable area, they, they become a little closer. closer there's, there's less of a difference. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my other, uh, if we're doing the, under the second category, um, access to public transit impacts. I mean, I guess the question for me is, um, you know, it's not just access to public transit, but where does that bus line go, right? Um, and also, I just don't know if there are many parents who actually use the public transit as, in a, in a, in a, as opposed to, you know, I mean, how many parents are using it now, in essence? Um, do we know, do we have a count of uh, on or off boarding of, of public transit? So I, that will help me understand the relative value of that. Um, it's always a value for me because I'm a big believer in public transit, but just in terms of you know, there are there are a lot of parents who use public transit, so it's a high value versus most people use school buses. So any other thoughts on that? And this one was actually a new ad that we did because um, when pure transit impact was in there, Paul, before we couldn't think of how in an equity concept, we couldn't think about how it varied yeah. by the site per se, because, mm -hmm. you know, so any other thoughts on that? So it came up it actually came up last Friday, um, on, and you're right, it's where the bus routes go. So I see three, four hands up. So um, I wish we were all in a room, you could just all shout out. But anyway, Jonathan, and then Mike, Sean, and Alicia. Jonathan, go. I'll be, I'll be quick, because I, I think the topic wants to stay on the, on the equity piece. And my comment was really about the the usable size of site. I, I was just going to suggest that might be called um, buildable uh, okay. site area or something like that, because obviously the the there are portions of the site that can't be built on, the, but that the town can still use for soccer fields or baseball fields. It's not like okay. they're unusable from from that perspective. And that that if folks who are not intimate with the process we've been going through look at this, they might think, oh, you can't use those areas for anything. That makes sense. Definitely. Okay, um, Mike, Sean, and then Alicia. So uh, I was gonna say what Jonathan was gonna say, but less eloquently, so thank you, uh, Jonathan, I think for saving the time. So I'd, uh, just a couple others. One, to Paul's point on the public transit, I did check with uh, our folks in the family center, and um, I think it, it, it's a mixed bag because we don't have many families using PBTA to get to some of our sites, frankly, because it takes so long. Right, it's, there's not like a direct line to the Fort River one, where it's really convenient and people can access that in a way that that works in their family schedule. So I'm not suggesting it doesn't matter, but I, I would say that right now it's incredibly infrequent that any family member uses the PBTA uh, to get to the school because um, it just and that's not a critique of PBTA. It's just the reality is that's not like downtown where there's lots of routes that can get downtown uh, in a fairly quick order. That's not the situation uh, at the sites um, that we have. The same for Parker Farm, other schools that are, are more connected to the PBTA. I think, you know, it's great to have a stop and it looks good on paper, but the reality is our families don't access it um, to get to the school. Um, that could be changed, right? There could be more direct lines that go there. I'm not, you know, that's way out of my uh, wheelhouse. Um, I think the two other things I wanted to mention were uh, where I struggle on this one, I know we've talked about before, is how these are weighted, because uh, personally, I wouldn't weight all of the items evenly, and I don't know how that can be managed. Um, I like things that I care a lot about and things that I think are, you know, bluntly auxiliary to my particular focus uh, on this. And so someone smarter than me can figure out how to how to manage that, but I just wanted to share that. 
Also on site, you know, I think at the last meeting or one of the last meetings we talked about, uh, the architect shared that you could build three stories on Fort River, but you'd be adding extra supports to it. Um, and so, and we've heard a number of concerns about, you know, wetness in the Fort River site, not about flood zone and that, I'm not talking about a, a legal sense, but just concerns about um, site issues. And I don't see that represented here. And maybe it's just because we feel like it doesn't matter. And maybe it's because it's below and I haven't looked down. Uh, and Phoebe's nodding her head yes. So uh, I imagine that it's because I haven't looked down and I didn't look at this since it first was sent out. So I apologize. And the last is I'm um, I'm always biased towards four point Likert scales, right? Just my research background says forced choices are good things. Uh, and if we leave it open to a neutral uh, account, then we end up with uh, people's natural bias to saying, yeah, it looks kind of similar. Um, so I can live with a three point scale. I just wanted to share that I have that personal bias and I'll stop talking. Thank you. Okay, Sean. Thanks. Um, so I guess this is more of a question. Are, do we want categories that we know are gonna be the same for all buildings? So for example, and maybe this isn't the case, maybe I'm thinking about this wrong. So it achieves the town's net zero bylaw requirements. Won't all these projects achieve that? So yep. that's as a fact. It's, it's um, I don't know that we're gonna rate the, the facts because they're just facts. So that's why we moved it up into facts as opposed to having it in a in a category within the actual matrix itself. But I think, I mean, we will wanna rate things like cost, right? I think that's, so that's a fact that we would wanna rate. So, I mean, the other facts, I can see how we would rate them because one might be bigger, one might be less expensive. Um, I, again, with the students moving in the fall of 2026, I don't know if, if there's options that that's not possible, but I could see if there is options where that's not possible, then those would be rated worse. Um, but the the net zero bylaw, just my assumption is they all have to. Um, even the renovation, we still have to follow the parts of the bylaw. Um, you know, when a building's renovated. So th that's my only thought on that piece is if if it's uh, has to across the board, do we need to show it, or should we just include some caption that says all these options will um, comply? And then the and then the other thing was, and it may be down below too. Do we want to include something? that around site that talks about access to adjacent sites. So some of our sites have access to the Hawthorne property or to the middle school um, fields. That's not technically in the size of the site, but that's a huge benefit um, to that location. And somehow capturing that somewhere in here, I think would be a good idea. Okay, so that's a suggested ad when we get down to site, right? correct, Sean? Yeah, yeah I, th I think jumping around is, is actually good because um, we sent this out in event for that purpose. Alicia. Um, I just wanted to add to the transportation piece. And so while um, taking the PVTA might not be a, a prevalent choice, I think that we sh still should consider all of the modes of transportation that families take in order to get their kids to school. And so... I know that there are, um, I don't know if it, I would call it a large number, but a number of people who walk to school because the school is close to them. And will those people then need to be bused or do they have cars or, so I think those are still things we need to look into. Yeah, I think, I think let's move down. You know, so one of the things just on equity, um, uh, on, on, on relative, weights on the criteria when it our first look when Phoebe and I looked at it we weren't sure that we had a concept that measured equity very well you know so we put the word transition in equity and transitions because we have some that there's more transitions or less so that's so we were we equity is a priority and a goal of everything we're doing but just to keep that in mind so let's go to educational um because we and, and Phoebe, you can talk about this next section. I'll open it up. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, before we get into, into all the different categories under uh, educational, um, I wanted to ask because I was not clear what pedagogical flexibility was. Um, so I struggled with what to put there because I just wasn't clear on that. Donna, you want to take that? 
You want um, to define? Actually, yeah, define well, Mike has his, yeah, well, Mike has his hands up, so I, okay. I, I'll i follow up if okay. Mike needed. Sure. So I think it's, it's really thinking through um, can we design spaces, and, and Donna, you can do this better than me if you like, but um, can we design spaces of where classrooms are located, where specials are located uh, that provide flexibility over time so that as population changes, we're not creating scenarios where sixth grade students or fifth grade students in this case are all over the building, that community use can be designed in a way uh, that, you know, protects the safety and security. So, uh, and that, you know, what doesn't, what's not true in our schools right now, that special ed, uh, to a certain extent, ELL spaces are integrated into the building. That's a requirement of DESE. If DESE, you know, if we we're building a new building, we built the same buildings we had, uh, they would rightfully say, no, you're, you know, you, those students aren't integrated. Uh, the spaces where students receive specialized services need to be integrated into the programs. And so, you know, for me, uh, you know, right now, if you look at where our specialized program spaces are, and even some of our special ed programs, students are walking quite a distance. Um, and there's a piece around where students are physically located that will it'll align with pedagogy, right? Like what we, what we want to do. I think the other thing that uh, kind of promotes it is some of these breakout spaces, having been to the school uh, in Springfield last week with Allison, um, with some folks from the district, you were able to see that there were multiple teaching spaces all integrated into a uh, wing uh, that's not part of our current programming. Uh, so I need to I need to jump in here. The people in town hall are having a fire alarm, so we need to vacate the building. Just so you're aware, but okay. you should continue. So, so Mike, can I just ask you? Would the way we're looking at the four columns to the right, um, if we're designing those breakout spaces and the space is going to be the same that Donna and team are trying to fit into each of our four possible configurations, would that vary? We were trying to folk say, let's delete rows if they're gonna end up being, um, you know, whatever the ranking is, red, blue, pink, you know, if they're gonna be the same. So if we're gonna be designing educational space to be flexible, um, it's, it's so Donna, so it was like, do, will this vary across the four? So um, just, just also, to add to Mike's, I think originally we just said educational flexibility or something. So we were trying to define it a little better, but as the program changes over time, as Mike said, just having the adjacencies and spaces be near each other, having the adjacencies um, being able to expand a grade or, or even more so uh, how maybe integrating the arts into the general classrooms. I mean, it could be anything, right? But um, as far as how do the four um, options vary, it, it will vary when you look at a renovation addition versus new construction because we're utilizing the existing building. And so the spatial relationships and adjacencies and flexibilities aren't going to be as, um, clear or flexible than a, than a new school because we're utilizing some of the existing schools. So, you know, I don't, I mean, it clearly, um, when we had the 165, th that was obvious. There was, there was no room for expansion or flexible changes in educational programming or the delivery of it. But uh, even, even when you look at a renovation addition, it, it won't meet that requirement as much as a new school. Jonathan, I saw your hand go up and, and Margaret, maybe could you scroll down just a little bit to show the building part, just get down a little bit more. I, I was just gonna, you know, I should I should have known that Donna would say it before I, I did, but I was imagining that the the there would be variance between the new building and the renovation on, on that topic. Um, okay. Okay, so, so then, it's a keep and we have a definition of it. That's great. Because um, we, if we go down to building, I think we had, um, all right, just 
No, but there isn't anything in building. So, so it is unique. That's what I was looking at. It's uniquely measured in this education. So that's fine. And we were trying to not have two rows say the same thing. Any other comments on education um, before we get down to building? And I just want to, I saw that both Simone and Ben are here. Um, and I just want to make sure Ben and Shimon, you can hear and be heard. If you can, Ben. Yep, I can hear and. Okay. Hear. Okay. And Simone? She's likely at the fire drill. Oh, right. She can't hear or be heard right now. <laughs> all right. So scroll down a bit more, Margaret, to do all of building. Could I, uh, can I jump in from a process sure. perspective? I don't actually think we have a quorum on the line Ooh. right now. Ah. Um, because of the fire drill. Uh, and I know we're trying to get through things, but I think from an open meeting law perspective. Oh, absolutely. Nice. No, no, thank you. Who can be present until the fire drill ends, unless I'm counting wrong. No, no, I completely right. One, two, three. Let me just. I just six. How many do we need? We need seven. Oh, actually, uh, seven more. Wait, Alicia? Is Alicia? Yes, I'm here. One, seven, two, right? three, four, five, six. We're at seven. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I counted wrong. My apologies. I just wanted to be sure. Thank you, Mike. No, we, sh we shouldn't. Yeah. So I did want to I did want to mention one more thing in in educational, um, in terms of you'll notice in here that outdoor learning is in a couple of different places both in education and in sight, and the reason for that um, we we thought about not having it in multiple places, but the reason for that um, is that we wanted to deal with that in two separate uh, two separate pieces. So under educational it really is about what we can what we can use from the surroundings um uh educationally towards our kids so um things uh, about each of the sites or, or that they can study those sorts of things whereas when it's when we see it again in site it is very specific to site itself um i also wanted to just say more on a general level um we can we can talk about sort of better or worse rating category, all of that, but we may wanna save that for next week just to be able to get through this entire matrix and talk about what the things are that are actually in here um, and, and you know, hash out kind of what we need to use this for um, when we're voting at our next meeting. Jonathan. I was gonna ask a question about uh, school disruption impacts. Um, it sounds like a category that, if it is what I think it is, would be important to leave here. But um, you know, if this is you know kind of ranking the the um, options on you know kind of least disruption to <laughs> kind of students who who need to move around or who might you need to you know access special services, if, if that's the intent of it, I think that makes sense to leave here. Otherwise, as the note says, is it really about um, you know a constructability uh, and process the question? Yeah, and Jonathan, it, that's why we we actually moved it up to here because it was down in construction and it, it yeah. felt like it was so it, so I think you're saying this is a better category for it to sit in. Yeah, it might it might need to be reworded. I don't know if just you know school disruption impacts you know. Uh, you know, I don't know, Mike might have a better, better way to phrase it, you know, in being least disruptive for the students, you know, in, in accessing what they need to access on a daily basis. Yeah, I, I think that I, I like what Jonathan said. Um, I think it should stay here. I appreciate and I should have said this before. I really appreciate uh, Phoebe your work with um, with Kathy to work on this, because um, uh, I think it's a, a much better document because of your work. So thank you. And I think it should stay here. It's certainly in the minds of, of, of staff and students and families is, you know, where will we have a play space while construction is occurring? Uh, will we be able to, how loud will it be? Will, will our students who are distracted by loud noises and staff members like me who are distracted by loud noises be able to continue working in that context? So 
I, I think it's spot on. I think it's going to be the predominant thing we hear about once we get through, hopefully, knock on wood, the next couple of phases is uh, what does it mean for the two years, two to three years of construction for people who are actually there? Because there's multiple hundreds of people who will be impacted, uh, some of whom will never see the benefits of the project, and they want to make sure that their education uh, continues during construction. So I appreciate you putting it there. I think it's spot on. So does anybody have an idea about a better way to phrase that? Because I agree, I don't like the wording of it. Uh, maybe uh, impact, uh, maybe just impact on education during construction, right? I think because it's not just about the, the indoor education, it's also about the outdoor education and play spaces. It's not, it's, not it's not wonderfully articulate, but maybe it communicates it a little more acutely. Is it, is it teaching impacts? Yeah, I think it's a little broader than just the teaching, right? Because it's it's also about where do kids have recess, right? Mm -hmm. Which be, you know, for some of our students to be a little more focused than in their math class, mine yeah. included. So, uh, you know, I, I think it, it's broader than just what's in the room in the school. I think it, it, you know, I'm talking to other superintendents has lots of impact with recess and other really important of our important things in our curriculum that aren't uh, simply about um, and what happens inside. Could you change um, school to student? Student disruption impacts, because that'll cover sort of, it'll be more specific to focus on the kids. And our fire drill is over, by the way, for everybody. I was so. gonna say that was we're quick, all, Sean. <laughs> it, was, it was a successful fire drill and we're all back. Well, maybe not all, all of us yet. But... Or, or I, I, you know, it's under educational. So maybe we just say disruption impacts and, and or you could then in the column C just elaborate a little more impacts to the to student learning, right? Because that encompasses noise, it will encompass sight as far as outdoor learning or uh, recess or P. Um, it also impacts staff. It's also going to, well, I guess maybe below here will be temporary traffic onto the site, right? We're going to have to come up with um, maybe a temporary drop off and pick up. I mean, there's so many things that this hits on. So I think, I think also that we can use, so we added in construction impact further down. So that may be the place to deal with those kinds of um, more physical impacts of movability on the site during construction, that kind right. of thing, parking, sure. all of those sorts of things, whereas the educational impacts can stay in education. Um, so sense. what Kathy and I found is that we didn't mind having some of these things in here twice under different categories because they impacted different things. Um, as long as we, we know exactly what we're talking about. So under, when we're talking about under education, we really are talking about the educational impacts versus when we put it under construction impacts, we're really talking about you know, the, the impact of construction on the physical site, how people get on the site, off the site, breaking things down, setting things up, all of that. Okay, so we'll wordsmith that and- um... Kathy, you're muted. Okay, um, what I was gonna su suggest is moving down and the one last thing just to keep in mind as we get lower is this number five, flexibility for future growth was in more than once. So it felt like it's part of the building, but um, we weren't trying to remove it. We were just trying to figure out where it would go. Um, so coming, going down, if you scroll down, Margaret, all the way to get most of building on. Um, so Phoebe, is this one, well, we'll both jump in. We addresses all building deficiencies was one we added and provides easy access to common spaces for all students. We weren't sure whether this was an equity or one, but we were thinking that we, that um, this will vary across ad well deficiency between ad reno and new and then 
the common space, depending on what Donesco can come up with with design, you know, how far do people have to go to get to the gym? How far do they have to go to get to the cafeteria? Um, so we thought of those as two, and we weren't sure what optimized connection with the outdoor space and integration with site was here, because outdoor space was up in education and outdoor space was in site. So we were just trying to figure out whether these were three different metrics or, and, and part of this was my mind, I, I do better with fewer criteria that vary than nuances when I'm trying to have it inform a decision, but I don't mind lots of rows if all the rows, it's just the way I think, as long as rows measure something different, then I'm comfortable with them. So this was, so I don't know whether people like these two ads, um, the, uh, the connection with outdoor space, um, we already, Sean already, I thought made a good suggestion that if every design is gonna achieve net zero the same way we did, they're gonna be all safe to enter and stuff. We just put up a, thought, a given is that all our choices will do the following. Um, so any comments on this or interactive with site um, that people saw before they got in or as they see them up on the screen? I can't find my little hand button, but I have a question. Um, okay, and let me get Sean first and then you, okay. Mark. okay, yeah. I guess this is just a, um, how do we evaluate the first one, um, contextually sensitive design? I just um, yeah. struggle oh, how we how we evaluate those, the options of, um, for that one. So, so Donna, that was when we actually left it in because we, probably because we weren't quite sure what it meant. And we were- <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. we can, I can imagine what it might mean, but then it's like, um, yes. Yes. new yes. building at Fort River, new building at Wildwood, would they be the same is the, the question? Well, they will. I, you know, I think the, the, we're looking at a multi-story building um, at this point, other than a renovation addition, um, probably right now, let's, let's assume it's a three-story building. So how well does it fit within the site and the neighborhood would be um, now you have a single story building, right? It's, it's really kind of sets into the, into the site. It's not uh, very as visible, especially you're coming down the hill, you're actually looking on the, on top of the roof or whatever. But um, when, when you go to a three story building, that might start looking a little different and how well does it fit into the neighborhood? I, I hate to even say things that I'm trying not to sway people's opinions, but for example, if you look at uh, the Wildwood site, you already have a you know, middle school, right? Which is a multi-story building there. And, and that site's a little more built up where at Fort River, maybe it's um, more residential and smaller scale neighborhoods surrounding it that a three-story building might, well, we can architecturally design it, obviously, to, to fit in with the exterior materials and everything, but that might look a little different um, in that neighborhood and in that context. Does so that help? Don so Donna, would, would it be better then in this little table we have that says two-story versus three-story? Would it be better to have that criteria just for that? I, I don't care. I'm no, just... no, I know. I'm just thinking, and maybe, you know, maybe at this point it, it you know, or if we make a decision... necessary, right? Okay. Um, is, it, is this a necessary criteria? So Mike, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, I'm going to have a an odd, odd response to that. So this is one of the ones I don't feel strongly about, but I know there are people who feel really strongly about uh, the site differences between the two, you know, um, like, you know, Wildwoods in a more residential neighborhood, Fort River is, um, you know, on a more main road um, that's traveled that, that doesn't have as many residential characteristics. To me, uh, this is one I don't feel strongly about, but I want to leave option. To me, I actually would leave it open because there may be members of the committee who do have really strong opinions about that. Um, I want to be really public and clear that I don't. Uh, but the sites aren't identical in terms of how they fit into a neighborhood and, as Donna said, how they fit in 
you know, for educationally, you know, in terms of the campus from the elementary to the middle school to the high school. So I'd be, I'd be in favor of leaving it in. You won't see me talk much about this because um, it's not something I particularly care about, but, but I know there are others who perhaps aesthetically or have uh, strong opinions about the feel of that. So um, yeah, I don't know how to reword it to make it more clear, but I know I've received casual comments from staff members in the public uh, who do have strong opinions on this particular matter. So there may be building committee people who do as well. Jonathan. I, I have all confidence in the world that Denisco will handle uh, integrating, you know, the, on either site, the, the building into this, the neighborhood contextually. Um, that said, uh, I think it's something that members of the public may have concerns around. Um, and we may hear at public forums, you know, there may be some people who express a concern over a three-story building. Um, and so I think it is good to leave it in here uh, for now, and it may not be weighted very heavily. And I think at some point we do have to sit down and have a separate conversation, as Mike has suggested, about how to weight these. Um, some should be more and more important than others, um, but I, I would vote for leaving it. Okay, any other comments on this building section before we move to site? Um, and, you know, we're, we're, <sighs> Margaret had a question. Um, yeah, Mar oh, Margaret, sorry, Margaret. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't find my little hand button because I've got the, I'm sure yeah. I have. So my question was um, about this um, issue that Phoebe started with and the, and the distance issue. I'm just wondering if the, distance, the travel distance issue is an educational issue, or if it's, um, if it really belongs here as a building issue. I don't think it's an, I don't think it's an equity issue, because it's sort of more about, you know, the, the building option that's chosen. Um, so just a question to all of you. So you're suggesting potentially moving it to education? I, I'm looking to Mike to see if he and Donna also to see what they think about that. Sure. I mean, I think it is an educational issue. I mean, just, you know, if you look at where our specialized program space, I don't want to harp on that, but I think it's the one that comes up, you know, really close to the cafeteria, really far away from the gym space. I mean, you, you sort of couldn't design a space that's further away. Uh, so for students who, who receive extra adaptive PE, you can you couldn't design a space that involved a, a longer walk to get there. Um, whereas the classroom spaces are predominantly, you know, much closer. So educationally, I think it makes sense. I'm not sure it makes sense to be in the building category. I tend to agree with what you said, Margaret. And uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're just, and I, I take it that people like it. This was an ad. So it, we were, we were trying to get smaller. Okay. No, I think it's a good one actually, because okay. it's, it's not captured elsewhere. So, and also just to note that Tammy's here. Okay. Tammy, can you hear us? and be heard. Yeah, Great. Okay, if we scroll down to site, we didn't, okay, so um, we just added words to the outdoor space for educational play and green space to make sure it was there. And then um, the additional site cost wasn't there before. And I looked at actually a couple other towns and when they were making decisions. so. This is going to vary by site, um, but it's clear some of the sites will have additional. And then Phoebe and I both thought on a, does the ax, future access to the ground source wells, once they're in, you know, wh what is it they're underneath and is it easy to get to or not? So this was something we added here that clearly if we don't have ground source wells, this isn't an issue. Okay. So. So th this was, we and we didn't know what pedestrian safety and access meant. And if it meant sidewalks, if it meant crosswalks, we just weren't sure what it meant. Um, so we just had a, what did it mean? And then this last one, address ability, able to ad address all issues with ground stability and weight bearing. That's where Phoebe said we added it later because we added it here because we didn't see it earlier. Um, so those were, this section, we actually had some ads and no deletes. Um, Sean. Um, Donna had her hand up first. I don't know if you want to go to Donna first on that. 
I, sure. I was just going to respond just for clarification purposes. Um, the additional site costs, I, I leave it to you all, you know, that that will be identified in the costs of the in the cost estimates, right? And and it will be reflected there. But if people would like to address it here as well, um, that's fine. Uh, as far as future access to the geothermal wells, um, those will be treated in kind. Uh, we are going to put them on, we're not gonna put them under the building. So in, in either site, so those will be treated in kind and will be accessible. Um, really they're, they're kind of set it and forget it. You should not need to access them, but just so in you, case we would never put them under the building, right? So, 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 so that would be could, the same. We, you think we could just delete that? And then yes. I guess the suggestion is instead of additional site costs as a qualitative metric, we'll actually be able to see the dollars on it is what you're saying. So we can, yep. we don't have to rate it. Okay. So we could and, delete, we could dilute this new, these two new ads could both disappear. Yeah, I, unless, I, you know, I, I, I totally defer to that's, the that's just That's what you're suggesting, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, Sorry. and then just to, to um, identify item eight, improve pedestrian safety and access, it would be making sure that we had sufficient sidewalks. We're not, we're not talking outside the site, right? Because that's beyond our scope of work or limit of work, but it would be for kids that are riding their bikes and okay. the pedestrians that we have curb cuts, how, you know, are they crossing parking lots? Are they crossing driveways? That type of thing. So okay. one site might um, be less improved than the other, just given the access points onto the site. But um, again, you know, you, you have both, both sites are, pretty large so that we, we shouldn't have as much of a concern as we would in a urban environment. So I see Sean's hand was up and then Phoebe, I do see your hands up too. Yeah, I was just gonna um, kind of concur with what Donna said about the additional site costs. I feel like that's already gonna be evaluated in the construction costs. So having it twice um, feels like it just, it's, it's making it count double. Um, so I think that one's, I would agree with removing that one and having it just be part of the construction cost. Okay, the, the only, one, the, and I'll just, Phoebe, you should chime in. The one thing I was, I, w I guess we're gonna talk about this at the next meeting because uh, Danisco is gonna bring in more information about these sites. Um, the mitigating water issues was, is likely to vary between the two. So just, keep, it's not just about dollars. But um, it's trying to think of, you know, are there any risks in one site versus the other? So maybe the word cost is the wrong one, and we can come back to this as a mitigation of site issues. Um, yeah, maybe. I also I, I also want to say that I, I when we were talking about these, Kathy, um, they were I think we were taking them also in a little bit of a different direction in terms of with the site costs, I think we were also kind of trying to get to what is really a project cost and versus what is kind of, I mean, all of it's a town cost, but but the difference between, you know, what really can, what really should be rolled into the project versus a town cost, if that makes any sense. I don't know how to better describe that at this moment. Um, and then with future access, when I, when when this was raised and we were talking about it, my concern was a little bit more, um, for instance, if we're talking about Wildwood, those wells are not actually on the Wildwood property, they're on the middle school property, right? Um, which uh, if, I'm, if I'm understanding it all correctly means it's regional, we'd have to talk to the regional um, uh, school committee. So are there differences in terms of that? What, what happens if we need to access them in the future? Um, are there more humps, uh, hoops to jump through? Those kinds of things. Um, so not necessarily about physically, how do we access them um, or uh, those kinds of things, but what are the potential future impacts of needing to change something, needing to um, you know, go back in and, and I don't know, do whatever may need to happen in the future. Um, 
So I don't know if that changes whether or not we we as a committee think that these things should be deleted. Um, but I think it's not necessarily just sort of um, as clear cut, uh, maybe. And then the only other thing that I wanted to say in here, which is off of that, is I would like to be able to uh, sort of figure out when we say in number one, maximize efficient util utilization of site, what are we talking about when we say efficient? I'd like to be able to define that in my mind. And I don't know what that means right now. Okay, so we've got Jonathan and Paul. And fortunately, this is being recorded because these are all great comments, Jonathan. You know, I, I actually wanted to talk about the last one that you added 57, but but after Phoebe's last comment, I wanted to actually, I'll talk about my thoughts on number one too. Um, I actually think that if we had major differences in, in the efficiency of utilization of the site, they they would, I think we'd already see them. I'm, I'm wondering if this one is, is all that valuable, um, but I would defer to others. I have the suspicion that, um, you know, as Donna and her team have been placing options on the site and dealing with initial thoughts on parking and access, um, you know, if there were real red flags here, I think I think they may have already come to the, the forefront. Um, but uh, on what I guess would be number nine or it's line 57, um, I think that's going to be already, you know, that that will have to be addressed um, in any of the three story schemes that are on Fort River. Um, and it's going to be in the cost. You know, it, it's going to be it, it'll it'll show up in the cost. Uh, and so to me. I think it's a given that it will be dealt with, um, but so I'm not sure if there's if there's something else that can be that this was waiting other than um, the extra costs around those concerns. So Jonathan, could just so you're suggesting maybe delete number one altogether because it. It's... I'm wondering if if it's it's valuable because um, you know I think it, if I, I I hear Mike on the on the topic of you know not having a neutral. Um, and even for this, you know, one might be, you know, if we, if it's ABC, you're going to, one might be B and one might be C. Is it really differentiating a lot? I can imagine there's a lots of other criteria that are going to be more, more meaningful for, for choosing between the options. But th that's from my perspective. Others, others may agree, you know, completely. Okay. And, and just on the ground stability, I mean, we'll hear more about that next week, but in, I think that I added this, or Phoebe and I both added it, that you know it's possible we wouldn't put a three-story on a, on a Fort River site. But the other thing that the write-up on the site said, that if you do an ad rental, you potentially, with the new addition, destabilize the existing piece because of the stability of the ground. So I don't know whether that's different by site, but I think you're suggesting we delete both of those. I, I am, because yep. what I'm, yep. my gut says, I, I, I that, think, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I, my gut says that if there's a major issue there, Donna is going to come to us and say, we can't consider a three-story building on the Fort River site because of X, Y, Z. Or it'll be very obvious that, yes, we can do a three-story building, but you're paying, look at this penalty you're paying in the cost estimate. Okay, Mike, and then I see both Donna and Margaret's hands are up on this. So this is this is a suggestion of, at least two deletes and potentially on this ground source well, um, it potentially four deletes from this section. Yeah, Mike. I agree with Jonathan's comments, but uh, mostly I'm just saying I have to go. I have a 9.30 okay. facilitator of the meeting and Tammy's gonna have to go in, in four minutes because she's a participant in that one. So, um, but so, uh, I, re I really just wanna thank Phoebe and you for doing this work. It's It really is important that we get the criteria right and um, just wanna share my appreciation. Well, if you're running out and uh, Tammy is running out. Are there any comments you had? I just the idea of this was really a discussion because we tend not to have any time during the meetings to do this. Um, so on others, either send them in, but also the idea of moving all the net zero um, HVAC into a separate table and the comparison of two story, three story into a separate table. If, if you want to weigh in either now on those or um, send notes because, you know, the down here on construction impact, it's um, 
this is where Sean is saying we're going to measure it later. You know, so these these seem to be facts. You know, we're going to have cost facts. Um, so any any uh, thoughts on any other parts before you leave? No, I think I'll share them along um, and I'll watch the video of this and, and hear the discussion because I appreciate we're doing okay. this live instead of just electronically and um, I'll share them along with, with you all if I do. But thank you, everyone. Thanks for everybody. Thanks for everyone. Okay. All the work, brother. Thanks. So Margaret's hand is up and Donna's hand up. We're clearly, we're, we're, we're moving quickly on to the, the witching hour of one hour where we said we're only going to take an hour of everyone's time. Um, I, I want to defer to Donna to go first because I'm guessing she and I have similar comments. Okay, um, two things. One was um, kind of right behind Mike. I can probably stay for another 10 minutes and um, hopefully my responses to some of these questions are helpful. Um, but but I, I just want to echo Jonathan. Um, we would not be putting forward any options that are uh, problematic. So to address groundwater, to address ground stability, weight bearing. I, I mean, clearly we would have said you cannot have a three-story building on a site if, if there was gonna be problems with it. Um, so I, I really just wanna make sure that everyone understands that if there's additional measures that are required for a three-story school or, or a um, renovation addition. We don't think there's any issues with that. You know, it's it's really just treating the site, whether it's with foundations or whatever, to, to make sure that these um, can be done. So just I just want everyone to know that it might just be reflected in the cost, but we would never put anything forward to you that was not doable. Um, and, and we didn't think was practical. So I just wanna throw that out there. And as far as maximizing the efficient utilization of the site, I think we're getting there on Wildwood. The, the differences are that we have an existing building there. So the placement of the new school is really a derivative of where the existing building is, which then um, in some options may not be the best use of the site because we have no choice. So, so, you know, that might be more of a subjective or irrelevant at this point, because I think it's plot, you know, we, we can ad address the site and, and layout of the site in a way that maximizes the site. Margaret. So super quickly um, on this issue about the ground source wells, um, PB, it's actually an important issue. If there were part of the project that was outside of the, the site, I do think there should be some indication here, which I would probably note as, you know, requires um, a, outside agreements, right? for the use of real estate. And it's also something that the MSBA cares about. So um, I, I think you you have your finger on it, but we'll probably just want to reward that, so. Okay. Um, I'm looking for other hands. Um, so I, I think we're, if we scroll down, the suggestion was moving all the net zero related to a separate table. Um, and I started to do this table. This is not I. Dinesco Tom, Torton Tomasetti provided us with a bunch of information. I forgot to put life cycle cost analysis. They've already been starting to populate this table. So it allows you to compare the HIVAC systems. Um, and it's still in process. Um, so I thought it would be simpler to move it out because as you can see on this one, the new building versus ad reno, it's not really varying by whether it's wild at Wildwood or at Four River. It's varying by which HIVAC system. So if people are comfortable with that, it just gets moved and then we can get away from this issue that we've somehow not identified some of these costs as HIVAC, which is HVAC, which is part of the building. Um, we're gonna have to have heating and air. So that was just my point. So Margaret, when you go back, we just removed a whole bunch of rows and tried to figure out where they would fit somewhere else. Um, so, so all, all of those, 
are then in the in the yeah, table. The, yeah. So they would just be moving because they were all a, around um, the HVAC and the system stuff. It was not as much site specific. Um, so any other comments? And I, I, did, I do wanna honor the one hour, Sean, Sean is here. And the other thing is every, let me get to Sean and Rupert. People can send in comments and we'll just collect them. We won't make any other changes after this. Uh, Sean, then Rupert. Um, this is just something to think about further. I, I feel like the um, the HVAC table and the two or three story table, those are almost tables we do after we select add reno or new construction, because then it's within each of those options deciding between two story or three story. Um, I feel like doing it at the same time makes it sort of adds, it makes it, I think, harder to think about because you're comparing like a three story here to a two story there. Um, and then, so I think for this section, it would really be, is there anything about add reno, new construction that affects the net zero component as opposed to the type of system we would use? Is there anything specific to those sites or specific to new construction versus reno that might impact that? Um, and I could see, for example, like maybe the cost for the renovation might be more expensive um, to, to redo the ventilation system, for example, to, to put that into an existing um, structure. Um, I feel like that's the kind of stuff that should be captured here. And then the decision about what type of HVAC system should be once we pick an option, then we do that analysis between the two. Okay, that makes sense. And that, that was partly the thought of moving them to those tables that those were separate decisions, but right. there is some very, so you're saying, can we put something in that would capture capture that. So I'd have to go back and look at the information we have so far because it's it's um, it didn't it's Jonathan's not he said it doesn't vary as much as you might think right. it does. Sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> Rupert. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, Sean already said uh, most of what was on my mind. Um, it does occur to me that uh, there could be differences in the cost of uh, the well installation at two different sites. Um, so there may end up being uh, some some variation there that, that could could have a cost difference. You know, and it might be shown on your ad reno versus new. We didn't see it in the initial estimates, but the ad reno may be a less energy efficient building just because of its um, the way it's single story and doesn't have yeah. the tight envelope. Um, so if we called it energy efficient, you know, yeah, that's a good building, idea. Yeah. Just just didn't link it to any kind of energy. It doesn't matter how we heat it, right. <laughs> how yeah. we air, air condition it. Okay. Any other comments? So I want to I want to just thank everyone for making the extra hour time. It's nine thirty two. Um, so I think the plan is we we keep what I call the messy the messy mock up table. We'll reword some, and there were a few suggestions of deleting things that Phoebe and I added. So we'll we'll do that um, and bring it back to the full committee with um, a here's a mark mock-up and here's what it might look like if we made all these changes um, to see whether we can get to a final table that we all like um, at the next meeting. And the, the reason we were trying to push on this is we are meeting on April 22nd, then we're right away in May and we're gonna need this to start filling this out to help us um, think about our choices. So if there are any other final comments and really just please send them in if you look at this, uh, Jonathan, yeah. So the, the other thing I, I think uh, that we need to do before we start using this is to, to give some thought to, to how we're gonna weight it. Um, Mike was, I think, quite right that, uh, you know, certain things are more important than others. Uh, Donna and her team are gonna do a great job of of giving us build, you know, the best building possible in each of the options. Um, yeah. uh, and so we need to think about that. And I have to say, I haven't thought one quid about it yet, but, um, but I think we want to. 
And so that would become to, to have initial thoughts, you know, are there a few of these that are more important? Um, so even if you added up all the positives, if they didn't have a few things in them, you know, positive. And then I guess it's still of, is there a four point scale? Um, if anyone can think of a four point scale, <laughs> um, you know, shades of better. Um, <laughs> If with no neutral, it's just like some of these just really felt hard to say this is better or worse. Um, it, they seemed about the same in different ways. So both of those, um, and we'll see whether we can make enough time on the agenda on next Friday to come back to this and get people's thoughts to get to uh, at least nearer to something that we're willing to use. And uh, maybe I'll just send out with a people put stars next to the rows they think are more important to them. And we can go around the room and just get people's initial thoughts. I mean, I think everyone has, the cost of the project matters a lot. <laughs> um, so is that above and above up? So any other uh, comments, thoughts? Um, and since, since we um, are doing this just as a special meeting, um, you should still send comments mainly best to me and I'll just collect them all and without any attribute and put them in a memo on here's additional comments we got so that nobody has to be influenced by anybody else's ideas. So just uh, send them to the chair. You can send them to Margaret too, since she doesn't get to vote on anything, but you can send them to me. <laughs> So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for being willing to, to meet on such a short notice. And I am going to declare the meeting adjourned at 939. Bye. Oh, how do I stop? I'm Margaret Stale. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to do this recording. Pause recordings, record, stop recording. Yes, we stop recording to the cloud, yes.